Good morning. Welcome on this eighth Sunday after Pentecost. Today is Sunday, July 31st. Can you believe it's the last day of July? Do you know what that means? Tomorrow's August, which means summer's over. <laughs> if you're a teacher like me, that's what that means. It's like, oh no, I haven't done any lesson planning. Um, so summer is, uh, we're in the middle of summer. We're in the middle of summer. Uh, welcome if you're joining us online. Uh, we're glad to see everybody here in the sanctuary. Uh, would you please bow your head with me in prayer? <clears throat> we give thanks to you, God, our Father, for mercy that reaches out, for patience that waits our returning, for your love that is ever ready to welcome sinners. We praise you that in Jesus Christ you came to us with forgiveness, and that by your Holy Spirit you move us to repent and receive your love. Though we are sinners, you are faithful and worthy of all praise. We praise you, great God, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And would you turn to our call to worship? Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Let's sing praises to God as we stand together and sing, Open the Eyes of My Heart. Peace of Christ be with you. Let's share the peace of Christ with one another. Let's share the peace of Christ with one another. All right, now it's time for our news and announcements. Does anybody have anything to announce from the congregation? Yeah, Avi. Good morning. This is Tuesday evening. August 2nd, August 7th, 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 August 7th,
For those online, uh, Tuesday, choir, be there. <laughs> Other announcements, yeah. Please join the coffee hour. Yep. Tuesday, Wednesday this week for church office hours? Okay. So not Thursday. Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, there are a couple of things in the bulletin uh, to point out. There's um, our, our preparations for... Um, Vacation Bible School is are still underway. Caring Hearts Food Pantry and also Restoring Hearts Ministries are looking for items. So next time you go grocery shopping, uh, bring this list along with you and see if you can help out. Um, I think that's it. I think everything else we can read. With that, let's turn to our call to confession. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Trusting in God's faithfulness and compassion, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Would you please pray with me our prayer of confession? Merciful God, you made us in your image with a mind to know you, a heart to love you, and a will to serve you. But our knowledge is imperfect, our love inconstant, our obedience incomplete. Day by day we fail to grow into your likeness. In your tender love, forgive us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let's go before our gracious God in silent confession. Hear these words from Paul, the Apostle. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. It's time for our first Congregation's Choice hymn. Does somebody have a hymn for us to sing? Yes. In which one? The purple? 442?
be seated. As we open up the scriptures, would you please bow with me in prayer? We pray, Lord, that you will open the door of our hearts to receive you within our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're continuing our story in the life of Jacob. Uh, last we saw Jacob, um, what, what did we do last time? Say that again. Uh, Rachel and Leah. Yeah, he got married. <laughs> it's okay. It's the middle of the summer. Um, and we're, he's still living with Laban, his uncle. Uh, he's going to stay there for, he's going to end up having stayed there for a total of 20 years. So he's with Laban a really long time. And remember why he's there with Laban, right? He stole his brother's blessing, his brother Esau, and Esau wanted to kill him. Esau wanted to end his life because he had taken his firstborn right. Uh, so Jacob fled, he left, uh, he has a dream, a stairway to heaven. God says and promises, I will be with you. He meets Rachel, gets married. It's complicated. <laughs> let's, let's just leave it there. Uh, and we'll continue where uh, we are in the story. Genesis chapter 30, verses 25 through 43. Please listen for the word of God. When Rachel had born Joseph, Jacob said to Laban, send me away that I may go to my own home and country. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served you and let me go. For you know very well the service I have given you. But Laban said to him, if you will allow me to say so, I have learned by divination that the Lord has blessed me because of you. Name your wages and I will give it. Jacob said to him, you yourself know how I have served you and how your cattle have fared with me for you had little before I came and it has increased abundantly and the Lord has blessed you wherever I turned but now when shall I provide for my own household also he said what shall I give you Jacob said you shall not give me anything if you will do this for me I will again feed your flock and keep it let me pass through all your flock today removing from it every speckled and spotted sheep and every black lamb and the spotted and speckled among the goats and such shall be my wages so my honesty will answer for me when you come to look into my wages with you everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and black among the lambs if found with me shall be counted stolen. Laban said, good, let it be as you have said. But that day Laban removed the male goats that were striped and spotted and all the female goats that were speckled and spotted, every one that had white on it and every lamb that had, was black and put them in charge of his sons. And he set a distance of three days journey between himself and Jacob while Jacob was pasturing the rest of Laban's flock. Then Jacob took fresh rods of poplar and almond and plain and peeled white streaks on them, exposing the white of the rods. He set the rods that he had peeled in front of the flocks in the troughs, that is, the watering places, where the flocks came to drink. And since they bred when they came to drink, the flocks bred in front of the rods, and so the flocks produced young that were striped, speckled, and spotted. Jacob separated the lambs and set the faces of the flocks toward the stripes and the completely black animals in the flock of Laban. And he put his own droves apart and did not put them with Laban's flock. Whenever the stronger of the flock were breeding, Jacob laid the rods in the troughs before the eyes of the flock that they might breed among the rods. But for the feebler of the flock, he did not lay them before them. So the feebler were Laban's and the stronger Jacob's. Thus the man grew exceedingly rich and had large flocks and male and female slaves and camels and donkeys. This is the word of the Lord. We have another Congregation's Choice hymn. Uh, does anybody have a song that they would like to sing? Yes. That was 137? You can remain seated for this one.
We continue our story in Genesis chapter 31, verses 1 through 55. Please listen for the word of God. Now Jacob heard that the sons of Laban were saying, Jacob has taken all that was our father's. He has gained all this wealth from what belonged to our father. And Jacob saw that Laban did not regard him as favorably as he did before. Then the Lord said to Jacob, return to the land of your ancestors and to your kindred, and I will be with you. So Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah into the field where his flock was and said to them, I see that your father does not regard me as favorably as he did before, but the God of my father has been with me. You know that I have served your father with all my strength, yet your father has cheated me and changed my wages ten times, but God did not permit him to harm me. If he said, the speckled shall be your wages, then all the flock bore speckled. And if he said, the striped shall be your wages, then all the flock bore striped. Thus God has taken away the livestock of your father and given them to me. During the mating of the flock, I once had a dream in which I looked up and saw that the male goats that leapt upon the flock were striped, speckled, and mottled. Then the angel of God said to me in the dream, Jacob, and I said, here I am. And he said, look up and see that all the goats that leap upon the flock are striped, speckled, and mottled. For I have seen all that Laban is doing to you. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed a pillar and made a vow to me. Now leave this land at once and return to the land of your birth. Then Rachel and Leah answered him, is there any portion or inheritance left for us in our father's house? Are we not regarded by him as foreigners? For he has sold us, and he has been using up the money given for us. All the property that God has taken away from our father belongs to us and to our children. Now then, do whatever God has said to you. So Jacob arose and set his children and his wives on camels, and he drove away all his livestock, all the property that he had gained, the livestock in his possession that he had acquired in Padan Aram to go to his father Isaac in the land of Canaan. Now Laban had gone to shear his sheep, and Rachel stole her father's household gods, and Jacob deceived Laban the Aramean, in that he did not tell him that he intended to flee. So he fled with all that he had. Starting out, he crossed the Euphrates and set his face toward the hill country of Gilead. On the third day, Laban was told that Jacob had fled. So he took his kinsfolk with him and pursued him seven days until he caught up with him in the hill country of Gilead. But God came to Laban, the Aramean, in a dream by night and said to him, take heed that you say not a word to Jacob, either good or bad. Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the hill country and Laban with his kinsfolk camped in the hill country of Gilead. Laban said to Jacob, what have you done? You have deceived me and carried away my daughters like captives of the sword. Why did you flee secretly and deceive me and not tell me? I would have sent you away with mirth and songs, with tambourine and lyre. And why did you not permit me to kiss my sons and my daughters farewell? What you have done is foolish. It is in my power to do you harm, but the God of your father spoke to me last night, saying, Take heed that you speak to Jacob neither good nor bad. Even though you had to go because you longed greatly for your father's house, why did you steal my gods? Jacob answered Laban, Because I was afraid, for I thought that you would take your daughters from me by force. But anyone with whom you find your God shall not live. In the presence of your kinsfolk, point out what I have that is yours and take it. Now Jacob did not know that Rachel had stolen the gods. So Laban went into Jacob's tent and into Leah's tent and into the tent of the two maids, but he did not find them. And he went out of Leah's tent and entered Rachel's. Now Rachel had taken the household gods and put them in the camel's saddle and sat on them. Laban felt all about in the tent, but did not find them. And he said to her father, and she said to her father, let not my Lord be angry that I cannot rise before you for the way of women is upon me. So he searched, but did not find the household gods. Then Jacob became angry and upbraided Laban. Jacob said to Laban, what is my offense? What is my sin that you have hotly pursued me? Although you have felt about through all my goods, 
What have you found of all your household goods? Set it here before my kinsfolk and your kinsfolk, so that they may decide between us two. These 20 years I have been with you. Your ewes and your female goats have not miscarried, and I have not eaten the rams of your flocks. That which was torn by wild beasts I did not bring to you. I bore the loss of it myself. Of my hand you required it, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. It was like this with me. By the day, the heat consumed me, and the cold by night, and my sleep fled from my eyes. These 20 years I have been in your house. I served you 14 years for your two daughters and six years for your flock, and you have changed my wages 10 times. If the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac had not been on my side, surely now you would have sent me away empty-handed. God saw my affliction and the labor of my hands and rebuked you last night. Then Laban answered and said to Jacob, The daughters are my daughters, the children are my children, the flock are my flocks, and all that you see is mine. But what can I do today about these daughters of mine or about their children whom they have borne? Come now, let us make a covenant, you and I, and let it be a witness between you and me. So Jacob took a stone and set it up as a pillar. And Jacob said to his kinfolk, gather stones. And they took stones and made a heap, and they ate there by the heap. Laban called it Jager Shadutha, but Jacob called it Gilead. Laban said, this heap is a witness between you and me today. Therefore he called it Gilead, and the pillar Mizpah. For he said, the Lord watch between you and me when we are absent one from another. If you ill-treat my daughters, or if you take wives in addition to my daughters, though no one else is with us, remember that God is witness between you and me. Then Laban said to Jacob, see this heap and see this pillar, which I have set between you and me. This heap is a witness, and this pillar is a witness that it will not pass beyond, that I will not pass beyond this heap to you, and you will not pass beyond this heap and this pillar to me for harm. May the God of Abraham and the God of Nahor, the God of their father, judge between us. So Jacob swore by the fear of his father Isaac, and Jacob offered a sacrifice on the height and called his kinsfolk to eat bread. And they ate bread and tarried all night in the hill country. Early in the morning, Laban rose up and kissed his grandchildren and his daughters and blessed them. Then he departed and returned home. This is the word of the Lord. Would you please pray with me? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So my daughter came down this morning and she was carrying not one, not two, but three dolls. And she does this almost every morning now. And uh, my wife was making pancakes, and I was, like, tidying up some things um, related to the service today. And I hear from the living room, Nathan, no! What has Nathan done? Nathan has picked up either baby Emma or baby Dee Dee or Dolly and walked off with said doll. And this has happened every day for like two weeks <laughs> and it's this this it's like a pattern it's just like you come downstairs and like how much how much time until no nathan how much time um and how much time until tally's gonna learn that if she just left the dolls upstairs that nathan wouldn't be so interested in them right it's a, it's it's a pattern and it's a repeated pattern and it's one that eventually either nathan or Natalie are going to learn something from, aren't they? Don't we all have repeated patterns in our lives? Repeated patterns where we we're doing the same thing again, or someone else in our life, they're doing the same thing again. <laughs> um, and these patterns in our lives can be so utterly frustrating. They can be humorous. They can be downright destructive. 
They could be something as simple as walking down the steps and going, oh, I forgot to brush my teeth. I have to walk back up the steps. That's harmless. Um, but these patterns, can, they can be deep-seated sins and ones that recur in our lives again and again and again, sins and, and patterns of anger and, and, and rage, sins and, and patterns of greed and, and selfishness and, and self-centeredness. I heard somebody say recently that, do you know who the great enemy is? The self. And every day I look at the enemy and then I shave him. <laughs> I just think that's so funny that, that we are our worst enemy and the patterns that we develop over time. And it gets to a point where we almost need a divine intervention. We need God to break in. We need God to change the patterns. And here we find in our story a man named Jacob who is a man of habit and a man of patterns. The story that we see is somebody scheming again He's, he's in a confrontation with his uncle Laban. They're both trying to make wealth off of one another. And he is, I'm not a farmer, but I don't think taking, peeling the branches of a poplar tree and leaving it striped and putting it in front of the sheep is going to lead to speckled and spotted sheep. Do you, do you think that's how that works? I don't think that's how that works. I'm not a scientist. I've never, I feed the goats at Terrahune Orchard sometimes. Um, but that's as far as it goes for me. Um, <laughs> but Jacob is scheming to try and get as much of the flock from Laban as he possibly can. Where has he been scheming before? With his brother Esau. He's a schemer. And he's always coming up with new schemes. And not quite trusting God to carry forward on God's promise. Ah, I gotta, I gotta scheme to get this. God promised me that I would be the inheritor of the, of the promised land and the, the blessing of Abraham, but maybe I should dress up in fur and, and deceive my father. Maybe I should plot this scheme against Laban so I can increase and take his whole flock. There's other patterns in Jacob's life, too, if you've noticed. What is the, the central motif of this story? It's a chase. Did you get the sense? Jacob's being chased. You hear Laban's on horseback coming after him, right? Pursuing him for seven days. But why is it a chase story? But because Jacob is somebody who flees. Whenever there's a problem, Jacob is somebody who flees. Who else did he flee from? He fled from his brother Esau. When he learned that his brother Esau hated him so much because he stole the blessing, because he, he now wanted to murder him, Jacob fled to his uncle Laban. And here he is again, 20 years later, and he's doing the same thing. God said to Jacob, he, he came to him and said, I want you to leave and go back to your father. God came and said, go back, now's the time. And Jacob doesn't quite trust God enough another pattern in his life. He doesn't quite trust God enough to go to Laban and say, Uncle Laban, we're leaving. Here are your daughters, here are your grandkids, you can kiss them goodbye. I'm gonna take my sheep and my goats. See you never. He doesn't trust God enough to do that. He has to steal away in the middle of the night. So these patterns in Jacob's lives are recurring again and again and again. Laban was a man who thought of Jacob as an absolute blessing to himself. Laban. He actually, uh, when Jacob came up to him and said, I want to leave, I want to go to my father's house, Laban told Jacob that through the power of divination, whatever practice that was in the ancient world, it could have been through augury, it could have been through like slaughtering some animals, it could have been through throwing some dice and, you know, reading them a certain way. We don't really know. Uh, however Laban did this, he comes to understand that Jacob is a blessing to Laban. So what's the last thing that Laban wants? He doesn't want Jacob to leave. 
Ever since Jacob has been there, he's been a blessing to him. But Laban also is a man of repeated patterns, a man who has deceit, a man who cheats Jacob again and again and again. He says to Jacob, okay, you want to leave? Name your price. What do you want? Jacob says, I want the spotted and the speckled lambs. I'll take, I'll take those, the ones that are considered deficient. Laban says, fine, you can have all of them. And what does he do that day? He takes all of that kind of sheep and takes them three days journey away. So there are none for Jacob to have. So he has to stay longer and produce more sheep and goats in order to get what he needs. And that's where Jacob comes up with the scheme. Laban changes Jacob's wages 10 times. 10 different times he changed the type of animal that he was allowed to take. Uh, you can take only the striped ones. And then they bore all striped animals. Uh, now you can only take the spotted ones. And then they were all spotted. And Laban, in this pattern of, of cheating and, and, and wanting to be greedy, he keeps changing Jacob's wages. You can only take white sheep now. <laughs> um, God saw this and blessed Jacob because God was with him. Remember the stairway to heaven? Remember when God promised, wherever you go, I will be with you? God was, was seeing that Jacob was being oppressed by his uncle and was with him and he increased his flocks. But the other thing to see is that Laban is, is a man who's beset by, by patterns of greed. What about Rachel? Rachel grew up in her father's house. Rachel is someone who probably, as she was growing up, was told that these are our gods, and she probably saw some, some images, some statuettes, right, in the, in the household. These are the gods, and, and when it's um, the autumn season, we pray to this God, and when it is the spring season, we pray to this God, and when we want our wives to be fertile, we pray to this God. When we want the rains to come, we pray to this God over here. Rachel was probably brought up with a sense of praying to these deities, to these gods, in order for especially the agricultural life of the community to go well. So Rachel eventually marries Jacob. And what, who does Jacob worship? Jacob worships the God of his father, Abraham, the fear of Isaac, the, the God who is the one true God. Abraham and Isaac and then Jacob as the one who's received the blessing worship no other gods. So who does Rachel marry? This is a, an inter-religious marriage that we have here. And she is probably told by Jacob all about the God of Abraham, probably all about the God of, of her, her, his father Isaac, how he is the one true God. And then in the moment where they're about to leave, when they're about to flee, what's the thing that the Bible tells us that Rachel grabs for? What does she, what does she want almost more than anything? She takes Laban's gods and puts them in the saddle and they ride off. Why does she take them? We don't know. Maybe she wanted to harm her father because her father was really not fair to her. Maybe she really believed these gods could benefit her family. We don't know the answer. All we know is that she grew up with them and they were a pattern in her life and she wanted them to continue to be a pattern in her life. And it almost brought her, notice what happens. Laban says, you've stolen my gods. Jacob says, I haven't stolen your gods. Whoever has your gods, today their life is gonna end. Jacob didn't know. If Laban found the gods with Rachel, what would have happened to Rachel? She would have been executed. This happens at another point in the Bible, actually. A, a father comes home from battle and says, whoever, whoever comes out first to meet me will be sacrificed today. And who comes out but his daughter? It's one of the most tragic stories in the Bible. It's, it's wild. Um, but Jacob, in his rashness, says, whoever has Laban's gods, their life will end today. Luckily, Laban doesn't find them. 
But how did Rachel get herself in this position? Because of a pattern in her life of worshiping these idols. So what we see in these stories, in the story of Jacob, the story of Laban, the story of Rachel, is that we humans are beset with destructive patterns in our lives. And if we're all honest with ourselves, we all have them. Um, we don't need to necessarily confess them all to one another right now. Um, but if we were to spend time doing that, it would be a good therapy session, I think. <laughs> Let's not do that today, though. Um, but if we're just honest with ourselves, we have these patterns. Let's step back from this story and look at the grand sweep of the whole thing. What's this story tell us about God? What do we learn about God in these stories? What is the pattern that God practices? I am with you, no matter what. Wherever you go, I'm with you. No matter what you do, I'm with you. I am the God of your father, Abraham and Isaac. Jacob, I will not leave you. I will make you prosper. You and I were one. Even though Jacob doesn't quite have 100% full faith in God, he, he schemes and he flees in the, in the dark of night. Even despite... Jacob's faithlessness, God shows that he's faithful to Jacob. Despite Rachel and Laban's doubts, God shows himself to be trustworthy. Despite all of the sin wrapped up in the story, despite all the sin wrapped up in your story, God shows himself to be the righteous one. So the patterns in your life, though they are absolutely frustrating, and the Apostle Paul probably had a frustrating pattern in his life too. He described it as a thorn in his flesh that he's prayed for three times for the Lord to take away. And then he just comes to the understanding that my grace is sufficient for you. The thorn is probably not a real thorn. It's probably a metaphorical thorn for something else. Who knows? But these thorns in our flesh, these patterns in our lives, these frustrations, these, these sins, God can use even them to shape you, to help you to know even deeper who God is, one who is faithful, one who is with you, one who is trustworthy, and one who is righteous. So what are we called to in this story? It's amazing that Jacob is a father of the faith, right? We're supposed to look to him as an example. In this way, he kind of acts as an, as an anti-example. Don't be like Jacob. Don't, don't flee in the dark of night. Don't scheme anymore. Stop. As Jesus says, go and sin no more. Isn't that amazing that Jesus says that? Be free. Be free. God is with you right now. And even if you're in the, the midst of a pattern, God is with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you like to sing another song? Yes. In the burgundy or purple? Purple, 664? 664. Morning has broken.
be seated. And would the ushers please gather? Like Abraham, we have been blessed in order to be a blessing to others. And so after we hear the word of God, we turn back to God and respond through the gift of singing and through the gift of giving gifts. Will the ushers please come forward? Would you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, we dedicate these gifts to you. We do because we know that you loved us first, that God, you have shown us grace and mercy and kindness. And Lord, now we wish to show grace and mercy and kindness to others. Help us in this congregation to take part in your ministry in this world. We know, God, that you are working in Millstone. And God, we know that you've called us to be your witness, witness to your gospel and witness to your coming kingdom. We ask, Lord, that you would bless these gifts, multiply them, and help us to be good stewards. In Jesus' name, amen. You. you may be seated. As members of the body of Christ, we may boldly approach the throne of grace and offer prayers to God in the name of his Son, prayers for ourselves, for this church, for our community, and even the world. As we pray, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, would you say, hear our prayer. Please pray with me. God, we come before you because we know that you are our creator, that you know us inside and out, that you are the great physician, that you can heal us, that you are the God of all comfort. And so we come before you and we pray for Casey. We pray for healing from pancreat pancreatitis. Lord, in your mercy. God, we pray for Linda, prayer of healing for breathing issues. Lord, in your mercy. God, we pray for George, prayers for a successful treatment for cancer. Lord, in your mercy. God, we pray for Nick. We pray for successful interviews this week for obtaining a teaching job. Lord, in your mercy. God, we offer prayers of, um, or continued prayers for healing for Jeff. Lord, in your mercy. God, we also lift up your servant, Estelle, prayers for healing. Lord, in your mercy. God, we continue to pray for the people of Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy. God, we pray for Betty Kendrick's son, Richard, continued healing. 
Lord, in your mercy. God, we pray for those who feel like strangers in the land, that they would feel that they have a place in God. Lord, in your mercy. God, we pray for Terry Brown, strength and good health enough to go under, to undergo hip surgery. Lord, in your mercy. God, we pray for a Rachel continued blessing of good health. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we lift up Nancy, our Lord's blessing to improve her overall health. Lord, in your mercy. And God, we pray for Bill and Cindy Mayer, continued comfort and healing, and we thank you for their protection. Lord, in your mercy. God, we offer up prayers of fond remembrance for the lives of the service of Harold Ugi, Tom Castles, and Edmund McCree. Lord, in your mercy. It is through Jesus Christ who has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have one final hymn for the morning. Does somebody have a song that they would like to sing? Yes. In the purple hymnal? 69 in the purple hymnal.
as you go in peace to love and serve the Lord, know that whatever the patterns are in your life, that God's pattern is to love you again and again and again and again. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Alleluia and amen. You may be seated. 